studying the book of Acts. We have been, we started in the month of March. We started the book of Acts. We March, April, May, June, July, and we are still in chapter five. Okay, uh, I hope and I pray uh, we will continue to study this. I know in the midst of this, some people will come and ask you something and. You will be tempted to say, ah, I'm so pastor, the book of Acts. Some people may be tempted to say that, you know. No, it's just teaching the book of Acts. We have to finish at least one book in our life. Amen. So let's study the book of Acts, okay. And um, when you go home, you take another book and read for yourself and study for yourself. But I think there's so much to study in the book of Acts. I've, st I've taught from... Uh, several uh, books in the Bible, like Book of Ephesians, Book of Colossians, Book of uh, Titus, First Timothy, Second Timothy. Um, we have studied this, and today, and now we are studying the Book of Acts. So, in the last many months, we've been in chapter one through five, and I know I think we will be at least going through this book for about a year and a half. One and a half years we will take to complete the Book of Acts. As we study, we are studying, uh, we just have 52 Sundays, uh, uh, 52 weeks in a Sunday, right? So we just have 52 sermons. Uh, and so just 52 um, sermons we will get from Book of Acts in this year. And then the next year we'll have more. So you, you pray. If you're tired, just pray, Lord, please let the rapture come. So you don't have to hear the Book of, <laughs> Book of Acts. But I'm excited as I'm studying. I'm just enjoying this more than you, I guess. I hope you are also enjoying. I hope you are studying. Um, you, you know what? I would uh, encourage you this. Um, if you think that you're, you're distracted from this uh, study from the book of Acts and you think that you need to move something else and change, you just send me a text message. And I promise you, I will not tell anybody. I promise you I will t consider this as a request. I, I will consider that, okay, it's time to change a subject or go to some other st uh, studies. So please, uh, if you think that uh, this is too much and you just want to take a break and you want to focus on something else, some other subject, just send me a text message or give me a call and say, Pastor, uh, if you can, you know, just this is mine. So based on how many people are saying that, I will try to consider changing it. Otherwise, I will consider that you are enjoying the book of Acts and you want to study the book of Acts and uh, I will continue to do this because I feel myself uh, very much involved and I'm enjoying, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying studying this book and I'm learning a lot myself uh, when I'm studying uh, to prepare a sermon for you. But So I'm excited about it. So please let me know if you want to shift, if you are a little bit distracted and you want to hear some other book or you want to have some other things, but I'm not going to preach just to make you feel good, okay? You will be uncomfortable. <laughs> so uh, that's the word of God. It will make you uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable, but that's, the, that's God's power. That's the power of God's word. Amen. Stivo, come here. Good. Thank you. Okay. Acts chapter 5. We are uh, going to study from verse number 11 through 16 today. Acts chapter 5, verse number 11 through 16. Acts chapter 5, verse number 11 through 16. We are going to study about, when uh, we are studying about uh, the fear of God today. The fear of God. Uh, those were the days when the churches feared God. Those were the days when the churches feared God. How about now? Now we have excuses for everything. Now we have reasons for everything. Now we have verses to defend what we believe. Uh, I don't agree with this because this verse says those. It says that this way. And we take things out of context and just satisfy our flesh, just um, make it, uh, just to make our ha life happy, and we have lost the fear of God. Uh, there is no fear of God today in the churches, and so there is no power of God 
in the churches. And so there is no blessings of God in the homes of Christians. And so we see our families drifting away. Uh, so we see our heart drifting away. The thing is the fear of God. Fear of God is a string that binds us to God. Fear of God keeps us from a lot of trouble. If there is no fear of God, then we will never enjoy the presence of God. If there is no fear of God, we will never enjoy uh, or we will never enjoy, uh, long for the power of God. If there is no fear of God, then we don't want to get involved in the work of God. Why today we are not involved in the work of God? No fear of God. Why today we don't want to uh, sacrifice our life? Because there is no fear of God. Why today we don't want to witness to people? Because there is no fear of God. Why today our families are destroyed? Because there is no fear of God. Why today there are homes are divided? No fear of God. Why is it that we don't give as we are supposed to give for the work of the Lord? There's no fear of God. Why is that today we don't want to, we, don't, we feel um, so discouraged and we, we feel so bold about um, the Bible study? There's no fear of God. Why today we look at the clock before the service is over? No fear of God. Why is that we want to run away immediately after service? No fear of God. Why is that we want to come at the last moment for service? No fear of God. Why is that we don't want to sing the praises of God in the service? No fear of God. Why is that we feel sleepy during the church service? No, no fear of God. Why is that we don't want to hear the preaching of God's word? No fear of God. Why is that we will be sitting on this place and our mind is somewhere else? No fear of God. Churches have lost the fear of God. But we have a verse for everything to defend ourselves. But the church was not like that in the book of Acts. It was so, 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 so different. And by the way, we all are guilty. We all are guilty. The Bible says, and great fear, verse number 11, and great fear, it was not just the fear. It was a great fear. You know why today there is no great fear in our life? Because we have put a wall between God and our life from stopping God in working our life. It's not that God is not doing anything. It's not that God doesn't want to do anything. It's not that God is not powerful enough to do anything. God is all able. He's all present. He's all knowing. He can do all and anything. But we have blocked him. We have blocked him with our pride. We have blocked him with our doubts. We have blocked him with our attitude. We have blocked him with our stinginess. We have blocked him by our laziness. We have blocked him and built a wall between God and earth to stop him from working in our life. We have grown proud while acting humble. We have grown stingy while acting generous. We have grown fearless by acting fearful. And there is no genuine in the heart of a Christian today. And so there is no power of God upon our lives. Once upon a time, people pray, Lord, use me. Today, people no longer ever pray, Lord, use me. Today, people are afraid that if God begins to use me, I have to give up so many things. There were times that people would fast and pray. Say, Lord, use me for thy work today no longer. If I would ask you, how, how many of you, don't raise your hand, how many of you this week ever prayed this way, Lord, use me for thy work? How many of us really prayed? 
those things don't even come in the I, I'm, I'm speaking general I'm speaking this is genuine this is how the contemporary today's churches are we don't want to you God to use this I was listening to a song yesterday on the YouTube a worship leader is worshiping Lord see how wonderful I am worshiping you Lord you enjoy me worshiping you how great I am in worshiping you Lord I know you enjoy because I stand before you and you think that I am so beautiful because I worship you. Today worship has turned to I, me, myself. Look, I came to church. That's it. Bye. It's all about I today. It's all about me today. There's no fear of God. Because when Christians come, they get involved. When Christians have the fear of God, they are involved. They experience how we are guilty today. And great fear came. Why did this great fear came? Because God judged some people the verse before. We read, we studied about Ananias and Sapphira. And we studied last Sunday that if you lie to God, God will slay you in the spirit. Today we hear about slaying in the spirit. And people are, it's all about the charismatic meeting. Throwing people down, casting people down, and saying that's the power of God, an anointing of God. No, 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 no. When people fall down, it's because they have lied to God. The anger of God is upon them. They are possessed with evil spirit. They fear not God. It's because the glory of God is departed from this place. And it's because they are enemies of God. That's what the Bible says. I was watching a video about Johnson Sequeira. You know this new creation in Kalangut? And he has these, all these 50 nuns and there is about 13 young guys who are in the seminaries. And he goes and he holds them. He holds each nuns and he just fall down. Everybody is throwing down. He holds them and throws them down. When was the last day that Jesus did that? When did we read in the Bible that Jesus went around casting people, holding them and putting them down? When was the last day? And today we think about, oh, Benny Hinn, you know, this guy, and that Dominic, and this Johnson Sequera, and people are crazy running after all these clowns in the charismatic chaos today. And we think they're having the power of God. It's Satan. It's evil spirit. You check the Bible. Go home, and uh, you know, it's the, one of the best things is you can t today do it in your mobile. Take your mobile, put a concordance in your Bible, in your phone. Okay, uh, search for concurrence on your app. And then you click to King James Bible. Now what happens, put the word backward. Put the word backward. And then see all that verses that relates to backward will come. And every time that people fell backward, it's because God's curse was upon them. So when a person falls down in the, uh, in the, in the charismatic meetings... It does not mean they fell down because God's power came upon them. It was because either they are thrown down or it's against the word of God. I'm not talking about falling down because of your physical problem. I'm not talking about falling down because you slept or anything. I'm talking about in the charismatic settings today. You check your Bible. And there is a guy today in Karan Salim who started a church um, and um, throwing people down and people are flocking over there. And, and he says uh, from heaven, you know, look at this, all this fungus. You know why? If I was a charismatic, I would have turned this as a money laundering place. This is a Pentecostal pastor. And he says some, some water came through the roof and some water was coming through the walls. We had these things in our home. And I had to get a mason and get it, you know, plastered and did a waterproofing and painted my wall so that water may not come because of rain. I didn't go around telling, oh, the water is coming from heaven. And people are running to see water is coming from heaven. In a church building. I go, do your waterproofing first for your roof. Instead of fooling people. And people are fools today. Why? There's no fear of God. Nobody wants to study the Bible. No one to, no one to, nobody wants to open the Bible. There's no fear of God. And then he got some two, uh, you know, those feathers from the goose birds. 
and it fell on his wife's table and on, on the, in front of his car and he, and he put it on the Facebook and people are all like, oh, the angel's feather fell upon my table. Such a small feather. And he said, the angel dropped the feather. And people are going there. Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Gold dust. You know what? <laughs> if, 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 if gold dust were really falling from heaven, God would not be throwing a pinch of gold dust, a few packets. He would be throwing so much that we would be using, collecting all the gold dust and selling them and eradicating the poverty in Goa and in India. They buy this gold dust. You know, you go for this makeups and all. You, you know, you, you know in, I remember in, when I was in school, um, you know, they put this thing to sh make your face shines. And this guy, this guy is actually buy, it is, you can buy this all cheaply from Dubai. And, and they put it in their pocket, these powders. And, and nobody is knowing what, they, what is happening. So when people come on Sunday, they, you know, every pastor shakes hands, right? So tomorrow, if I put some gold powder on my pocket, and when you come, I shake my hand with you. You have no idea. I've just transmitted those powders on your hand. And you go and sit on your place and you, you just wanted to, and you did this. And the pastor says, oh, there's a gold dust from heaven on your face. This is how people are cheating today. When was the last day God threw gold dust from heaven? I'll tell you what God threw, fire and brimstone from heaven. <laughs> Not gold powder. They are cheaters. There's a guy called Hasli D'Souza in Karanzali. Be careful. These guys are possessed by evil spirit and they don't fear God. They don't fear God. They buy these carnival feathers. You know, you get that for carnivals on the, to put it for your hat. And they say this is from heaven. This is angels. Why would angel... Shed his feather. Is he sick? Is he weak? And by the way, you know what the Bible says? Angels are adult males. They are not babies. Angels are not birds. And in the Bible, angels never had wings. Angels don't have wings. The cherubs and the seraphims have wings. They're totally different. And you know what? Their wings are so big, the Bible says, with twine they covered their face, with twine they covered their feet, and with twine did they fly. It's not such a small thing. When you don't search your Bible, you can be easily fooled. Be careful. There is no fear of God, and so God allowed such delusion to get into churches today. People think that's what the power of God is, throwing people down. Or saying that, you know, the roof, there's water coming from the roof, or oil coming from the roof, or perfume coming from the roof. What's going on? And people are so foolish that they believe all this. And they do they did not even make an effort like, let me check it, whether it is in the Bible in this way or not. Somebody said, I believe it. Why? No fear of God. But people say, but pastor, look, there are many people going there. Yeah, where the dead body is, flies will gather. That's what the Bible says. And you know what we read about Ananias and Sapphira is because they lied to God and they were slain in the spirit. They fell down. Because they lied to God. They said, God, I will give you. You know, I'll give for the Lord's work. I'll give my offering. I'll give my this and I, I will sell my this and I will give it to the, your work. They lied to God. You know what? It's because of God's mercy that you and I are not consumed today because we all are liars in the house of God today. Am I right? Yes. We all have lied. It's just God's mercy that we are still alive. Otherwise, we are supposed to be consumed and thrown down and be buried just like Ananias and Sapphira. But that doesn't mean we are not going to face the judgment of God. I know it's so fearful, right, to hear this message. I didn't come here today, year to year. Aman, we, 
if we want to be enjoying this, then we can watch Indian idols. That will make us happy. But the word of God is powerful that it will put fear in our heart. And if it puts fear in our heart, it's good for us because the secret of enjoying the presence of God is the fear of God. Amen? We find what happened to Ananias and Sapphira and then the Bible says, verse number, they both died. Peter said, you lied to the Holy Ghost, you lied to God, you didn't lie to me. Verse number 11, and great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. You know why God would not allow all those fancy things that is happening in churches, that gold dust falling and water coming and feathers? Because today people, you know, that is idolatry. When you go after manifestations instead of the presence of God, you turn to become an idolater. You know, God told to these people of Israel, he told Moses, Moses, make a bronze serpent, put it on the pole, and when the people see it, they will not die. And the Bible says later on in 1st King chapter 18, King Hezekiah destroyed that serpent because people were worshipping it and, and putting incense to it. And God says, no, destroy it. Because God knows people's mind. He will not allow such things. That's why even for manna, God said, you know what, I want you to take as, many, as much as you want at that day only because if you take too much, it will be rotten. Because God doesn't want to keep anything. No manifestation. You need to seek my presence. You know what these guys are doing now? Holding on to those couple of feathers and few gold dust in packets and a little bit of oil in that. They're keeping there to showcase so that people can come to see. People are not going to worship God now, but to look at those stinking rotten things that they are holding to deceive people. I know I'm hard, but I've got to tell the truth. Because there's no fear of God. Today, there is no fear of God. We can lie as much as we want. We can just say whatever we want today. But great fear came upon all the church. Look at that. That's the secret. In the book of Acts, why God was able to do great and mighty works in the lives of the people was there was great fear. Not just simple fear. There was great fear. People feared God. People feared God. They lived in the fear of God. They said, Lord, Lord, no. I don't want to play around here. I just want to live for the Lord. I want to glorify Him. I don't want to make excuses. I don't want to build a wall between you and me. For God, here am I. It was a great fear. It's not that God cannot kill anyone just to put fear in us. We have blocked Him today. And God is a gentleman. He says, I will not interfere in your personal will. The problem is you and I who have blocked God. And great fear came upon all the church. It came upon all the church members. And all the churches that was planted. It came upon them. Everybody feared God. Everybody wanted to do the right thing. They didn't want to lie to God. They don't want to play around. Great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. See, when the fear of God comes, the power of God is freely upon the lives of people. You want the power of God in your life? Then you need to fear God. This fear of God is not like a thief fearing a policeman. This fear of God is like... Let me give an example. You know, Israel, my son here. He, ex he fears me extremely. I just have to look at him. I just have to look at him. He knows that he's not happy. I need to get right. But he doesn't fear me the way that 
a thief fears the police. He gets excited when I come home. He's all happy shouting up, coming and jumping on me. He fears because I have offended daddy. He fears me because he has hurt me. So he does not want to hurt me. That's why he fears me. You understanding? The fear of God is because we love God so much that we don't want to grieve him or hurt him. You understand? That is what God is expecting you and I to be. He doesn't want us to feel like, man, I don't want to go in front of him. No. I want to go in front of God because I fear him because I don't want to hurt my God. I don't want to grieve my God. And the great fear came upon all the church. And upon as many as heard these things. Isn't that amazing? How that people can fear. And what fear can do. It can turn our lives upside down. What fear does is, it's first, it gives us wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It gives us wisdom. In book of Proverbs chapter 10, the Bible says, you have you will be, your life will be prolonged if you fear God. You'll have a long life if you fear God. The fear of the Lord giveth understanding. We understand, oh, that's, that's evil, that's from the devil. This is from God. This is how God works. God doesn't does or do all these things. No, 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 no. This is how God works. Without confusion, everything in decency and order. That's how God works. He does not do it for my glory. He does it for his glory. Today, people pray, Lord, right now, touch and heal, right? We are commanding God, right now. Who do you think God is? Your slave? I think we need to pray, Lord, let thy will be done. Please have mercy and heal your servant. All the clowns on TV, that's what they are doing today. But right now. You would never do that to your parents, right? Right now I want food. Come on. How many of you will go to your principal and say, right now ring the bell for recess? <laughs> right now sign my report card and make me pass. How many of you sign? We don't do that to man because we fear man. But we don't fear God. So right now do this for me. We have lost the fear of God, dear friends. We need to come back and search his scripture. Find his heart. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard this thing. And by the hand, look at this. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. When the fear of God comes, there is a great power of God. When the fear of God comes, there is a great power of God. And the apostles were able to do great signs and wonders, the Bible says. What is what is that something that apostles were able to do signs and wonders that you and I may not be able to do today? Today everybody thinks, you know, I got the sign of the apostle, I got the gift of the apostle. In the book of Mark chapter 16, go to Mark chapter 16. Look what gospel of Mark chapter 16 says. In Mark chapter 16, Jesus appears to the apostles here. Okay. In verse number 14, afterward, he appeared unto the 
11. Who are the 11s? Judas is dead. He hanged himself and died. Afterward, he appeared unto the 11 as they sat at meat and upbraided them uh, with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. They shall cast out devils, you see, first one. And they shall speak with new tongues. It's not some gibberish. It's new tongue. You know what is new tongue, right? An earthly existing language. Not some, like somebody say, Shikamandaba, you know, Shikin, you know, wait, let, me, let me make this up. She came in the city wonder. She came in the city wonder. Somebody just started speaking in tongues. She came in the city wonder. What is that? Spencer says, I got a gift of interpretation. She came in city Honda. <laughs> she came in the city Honda. One guy did not like, uh, you know, Shira and Rava. So he started speaking in tongues. Shira Rava Makanaka. Shira Rava Makanaka. The father said, oh, I got my son is speaking in tongues. Shira Rava Makanaka. In Punjab, one of my friends started, said, you know, he got the gift of speaking in tongue. He's speaking in tongue. How is that? Ginger is Jesus. Jesus is ginger. Huh? No, Jesus is Christ the Lord. Jesus is not ginger. This is all satanic. Sikkim and Dasota, City Honda. And people are like, wow. She's, saying, she's, she's speaking in tongues. No, somebody taught her. I was watching uh, this, uh, a... a um, uh, a video and in that Johnson Sequeira is calling a girl from the uh, audience and he says you know I'm going to give you uh, I'm going to teach you how to speak in tongues now God is going to anoint you and the power of God is going to come upon you and so she comes up and he gives the mic to her and say now you pray and say Lord give me the gift of tongue and she begins to pray Lord give me the gift of tongues and then he says okay now keep saying hallelujah what do you say hallelujah and then she keeps saying hallelujah hallelujah and he's like come Fast, fast. And say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you look, you got the gift of tongues. Man, you can also say, Ramde Baba, Ramde Baba, Ramde Baba, and you'll speak in some tongues. Keep repeating it. It's evil, dear friend. What is a tongue? It's a new tongue. A new tongue is an earthly existing language where the speaker does not know, but the hearers can understand it. It's a language. And by the way, no apostles in the Bible ever laid their hands and told them, repeat after me. The Bible says the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit. Now, do I believe in speaking in tongue? Of course I believe in speaking in tongue. But it's the Bible way. It's the tongue. I speak seven tongues. I speak seven languages. But not gibberish. You know what gibberish is? Making some noise. Hallelujah. That is not tongue. That is remembering Lalu Prasad maybe. Somebody said, Lalu Prasad said, Jab tak bihar mein alu hoga, tab tak, ah, tab tak bihar mein lalu hoga. It's, it's evil. So what is a new tongue? It's an earthly existing language and we studied that in the book of Acts chapter 2 when the spirit of God gave them utterance what happened there were people uh, outside from 13 different nations that were gathered on that day and when these people who spoke Galileans those people heard them in their own language they did not say man I don't understand anything they said how come we hear in our own language this is a wonderful work of God don't believe this, all the clowns that says about tongues means just make some noise. It is not. God gave the gift of tongues on that time so that people can understand the work of God. It was the benefit for an individual. For the edification of himself. 
be careful dear friends there's a lot of deceiving spirit today it's up to you do you want to continue in such look look what the bible says they sh uh, they shall um, in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues like for example if i ask you what is your mother tongue you'll say konkani oh great do you know any other tongue yeah i know english i know hindi right that's called tongues tongues is never gibberish dear friend the gibberish sounds are always made by witchcraft if you ever go to a witchcraft doctor i mean don't go please <laughs> may god kill you if you go <laughs> but when you when people go to witchcraft doctors and they have these skulls and bones in this and they speak in gibberish that is what they say that is what gibberish is but when god's power come upon people and when they speak in tongue it's an earthly existing language which others can understand when they hear it so be careful and so you see they said speak in new tongue they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them today you see all these fellows who go around you know saying that i got you know i'm a big this benny hin will never come to your house and drink the water that you will give telling him it is not purified <laughs> you tell him this is not purified water it's from the tap i wonder how many preachers want to preach drink water from the tap today oh, give me purified water i want bisleri bottle purified why i don't want to catch any germs why the bible says if you claim to have that kind of healing power bible says you will drink deadly you will drink poison and you will you will not die it will not harm you you see how the manipulating hypocritic games going on today ask them to you know come let's go and sit in a small little gado and drink chai no i want to have it in big because i can get germs i can get germs be careful they shall take away serpents and if they take uh, drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so there are five gifts in one package and all these things is a sign is a sign of the apostles the apostles alone were able to do all these five signs today you go to any person who says that he can he has the gift of the apostles and ask him to do all this he will not i challenge you i challenge you to do that look at for uh, second corinthian chapter 12 man i came to get encouraged what is this going on man you can never get encouraged more than just sitting under the word of god and hearing the truth amen the word of god is what is going to encourage you dear friend see in second corinthians chapter 12 verse number 12 paul is referring to mark chapter 16 why because people were doubting him people said he is not an apostle you see the church in the early church did not just believe any tom dick and harry saying i am an apostle they tested them and so paul had tough time explaining them that he himself he is an apostle chosen by the lord jesus christ he had to convince them and show them in look at in verse number 12 it says what verse number 12 said truly the signs of an apostle what is the signs of an apostle mark chapter 16 all those five things they are the signs of an apostle truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience in signs and wonders and mighty deeds wow and god did such mighty work in the hands of the apostles why because the church is feared god and god was able to do much 
greater work. Because churches were in one accord and in the fear of God, they didn't want to offend God. They loved God and they didn't want to offend God. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Acts chapter 5, verse number 12. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's place. You know what the thing, the secret of the church, in why the power of God was there in the church? They were all in one accord. They feared God. And they said, hey, we're going to have this thing going on, okay? Let's do this for the Lord. They did not say, eh, Pastor, why? No, they all said, you know what? Man, if God put that in your heart, let's get back. Let's do that. We are all into it. That's how the people were. Today we have, you know, I have some opinions. Just like everyone has a nose, everyone has an opinion. But these people were all in one accord, one mind. God can never work in a place where people are divided. Pastor, I don't care about church anymore. I just come here just to, you know, I just, otherwise, you know, just two hours of entertainment. That should not be among us, dear friend. We should all be in one accord, one mind, fear God, and then experience God's power. How many of us really want God's power to be upon us? How many of us really want God to use us today? And if you really want, we will pray, God, use me. We will pray, Lord, let your power come upon me. We have forgotten such prayer. Am I right? We have forgotten because we don't pray anymore. Lord, use me. We don't pray anymore. Lord, I need your power. We don't pray anymore. Why? The fear of God is no more. Oh, this was amazing. And you know what happened? Verse number 13. And of the rest, just no man join himself to them. All this rival, all these troublemakers. You know what happened? They had this fear. And they said, oh, man, man I'll, I'll stay away from trouble. And then you know what the Bible says? But the people magnified them. Wow, God is doing great things. You know, in the early churches, there was no gold dust, there was no feathers falling, there was no uh, perfume and oil falling from the roof or water coming from the roof. It's just happening now because people found a way to deceive people because, you know, soul winning is so difficult. Let's make all this thing and we'll fill the church today. Telling people about Christ is so difficult. So, you know, people will come to see this. Let's make this entertainment going on. Verse number 14 says, and the believers were the more added to the and the believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both man and woman. You know, nowadays women show more interest in following God and His Word than men. Today you go and check in churches today. Women are more interested about the Lord and His work. Men are not interested anymore. Today, men are becoming more effeminate instead of being manly. You look at the pants some of the men are wearing today, young guys are wearing. They're wearing just like a woman will wear a jeans. Yeah. Men are becoming very effeminate today. They're no more wearing their clothes like men. The way they behave is more woman, feminine. Some of the, you know, they, they think it's cool being in the college. No. Some men, young boys in the college. Oh, please don't touch me. What's happening? You're watching too much of TV. Tight pants. Their legs are like hockey sticks and they want to, I don't know what. Skies. no fear of God. Too much of worldliness. 
Look what the Bible says. And the believers were more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. Why? The men were more passionate about serving the Lord and they were able to convince more men and, and women were more passionate in serving the Lord and they were able to convince more women and so people, the multitude looked at every man and every woman and said, I want what that man has. They say, oh, I, don't want that. I don't want to be like that man. <laughs> Those are Christians. I don't want to be like them. Look how weak and sick they are. When God's great fear comes upon us, God's great power will come upon us. Raise up man, young guys to be men. Raise up young girls to be women. Today men are growing like women and women are growing like men. Today the women are doing the work of a man much better than the man would do. Today, women are driving trucks. <laughs> Man doesn't know to ride a bicycle today. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women. Wow, this church was having the fear of God and see how God was working in their life. When God's fear comes upon us, you and I should pray, dear friend. Lord, help us to be. We are, we are weak, oh God. We are weak, and we want your power upon our life. Use us, Lord. Use me, Lord. I know you might have forgotten such prayer, but we can start again today. Amen? We can say, Lord, please, I want your power upon me. Lord, I want your fear upon me. And when, when the leadership in the church wants to do something for the Lord together, we all need to get together with one accord and one mind. Hey, let's have a women's conference. You know what uh, you all have? You know, I won't be able to come because it's rainy. It's going to rain on August 15th. It's rainy season, man. Uh, I won't be able to come because I have some work. Uh, let's get in one accord, one mind. Amen? The Bible says in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. That at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. These people saw how great the work the Lord was doing through the apostles. And the churches were growing. Because people were walking in the fear of God. And God's power was upon them. And, and the apostles were doing great signs and wonders. And then people were able to see, man, look what God is doing through these people. And they bought people and they laid them on the street. At least the shadows of Peter will fall upon them. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, There came also a multitude out of the city round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were waxed with unclean spirit, and they were healed. What is the next two word? Every one. You know, when God's power comes upon God's people in God's church, Great and mighty things happen. Salvations flow freely. Churches grow rapidly. And healings takes place instinctly. Instantly. 
when God healed people, when Jesus healed people, when the apostles healed people, it was never like, you know, you need to do this practice, okay? So after a couple of days, you'll be able to do it. No, they immediately got healed. They immediately got healed. The deaf did not say, ah, ah. No, he got healed. He says, I can hear now. I remember when I was a new Christian, 17 years ago, I went because there was a guy came in from Canada and he was, he said, you know, I can heal the people who are deaf and dumb. And so there were many people who were taken up. I still know a guy in Sukur. He's still dumb and deaf. And so he was taken up on the stage saying that, hey, pastor, he's able to hear now. And that guy says, says Jesus, he said, yes. <laughs> and then again, say Jesus, yes. He still says the same thing. He still can't hear anything. He still can't speak anything. But say, hey, look, he's able to say now. He's able to hear. And you follow such people who give testimonies. They're the same. Follow such people who give testimony. Really. I know about a lady, you know, who is not able to walk now. She is not able to come to church. She told me once that she went to this Johnson Sequeras meeting and these volunteers came and told us she's deaf in one eye, okay, because of her diabetes. And the Johnson Sequeras, uh, this, this uh, volunteers, they came and told uh, this lady and says, Auntie, what's on testimony? They go and give testimony. Like, Baba Kityak, Why? No, 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 it wasn't sound. You can see everything. I cannot see anything. No, no, no. Only when you declare God can heal you. So go and give your testimony that you can heal. You're, you're already healed. You know what they're saying? Say that you're already healed, then God will heal you. So they go up and they say, you know what? Uh, when, uh, Pastor, when Brother Johnson laid hands and prayed, I'm able to see now. And so she went up and she gave this testimony. After the meeting, she went and told the volunteer, Baba, I don't want to say anything. No, I Keep declaring in your mouth. Till today, it's been seven years. She's not able to, she's able to see in one eye. She's not able to see in another eye. You, you try to follow such people. Fakers, liars, no fear of God. You see, when God heals people, he does it immediately. Now, can God heal people today? Absolutely, I believe. God healed my son. He was, every second month, he was having cold and he was having um, this breathing problem. And we, we were tortured mentally when we would see him uh, suffering breathing. He had virus in his lungs. When we went to states, we checked him and the doctor said there is virus in his lungs. And we prayed and God led us to a, a doctor that would give me and, and that medicine instantly healed him. It's been eight months today that he never had cold by God's grace. Wow. God can heal. And when God heals, he heals completely and immediately. He doesn't say, you need some practice. I know in a Benny Hinn's meeting, somebody took a crippled man and he's you know, still standing like this. He said, 15 years I could not stand. And now I'm able to, but he's still crippled, okay? Just like that. Whom are you feeling, fooling? And that's why today people don't want to believe in Christ because people think they're all jokers, they're all telling lies. They don't want to hear the genuine truth. That's why the Muslims mock at Christian. That's why the Hindus mock at Christian. That's why the atheists mock at Christian because there are few and chosen and frozen Clowns who are mocking by telling the lies to people using the Bible. This has become a channel of increasing your bank balance. When actually, this should lead you to be generous and sacrificial and giving. When great fear comes, Great power comes upon us. And great work is worked among us by God. You know what God did? God healed people and everyone was healed. 
today you go for this meeting and tell, take, take hundred, uh, five people from your, take, you know, try to take five people. I'll tell you, go to this, some healing meetings and take five fellows who are sick and see if they are all getting healed. And I challenge you, they'll come back as they went. Because everybody's lying today in these charismatic things. You stick to the Bible, read your Bible. You need this King James Bible. And you read and study the King James Bible and stay in the word of God. Stay in a church that preaches and believes the Bible as it is. It'll be fine. The early church had the power of God because they feared God. The sacred of having the power of God upon our lives, upon our family, and upon our church is when you as an individual will fear God. You all as a family will fear God. And as a church, we all will be in one accord and fear God. Amen? Amen. When we fear God, God does great work. Can God heal? Absolutely he can heal. He will set you free, dear friend. He is all powerful. He can heal cancer. He can heal the sick. He can raise the lamb. He can give the uh, deaf to hear. He can make the uh, lame to walk. He is able. But he will not do it for your glory. He will do it for his glory. He will do it in his time and not your time. And sometimes if he allows you to be sick, it's because he might be getting glory out of your sickness. There are so many people today who are sick and yet praising the Lord and God is getting glory out of them. Just like Apostle Paul who said, in my infirmities, I will glory in the Lord. For when I am weak, then am I strong. I rejoice in my infirmities. That's what Paul said. And God, that's why God said, my grace is sufficient unto you. My, weak, uh, my power is make weakness. Uh, wait, my weakness, what is that? Let's read that. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. My grace is sufficient. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. You have problem? Will this discourage you to follow Christ? Or will this say, I will most gladly rather glory in my infirmities. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Can I tell you something, dear friend? You and I deserve no good. And all the good that we are enjoying is because of God's mercy upon our life. Amen? Oh, I followed Christ. Why all this? As if you did some great thing, great favor by following Christ. You know, I believed in Jesus. Why am I going through? You didn't do some great thing for God. Oh, God had one empty seat and you filled it up. No. He did all favor upon your life. His mercy is great upon our life. He showed mercy and grace and favor upon our life. And if today God thinks that this is what we need to live, let us glorify Him in and through our life the way that He wants us to be, dear friends. We have no right to ask, Lord, I mean, it's not that you cannot ask, Lord, why this? But don't complain and say, like, I believed in you and you're torturing me like this. Nobody wants to be sick and weak, dear friends. Nobody wants. Everybody needs to be wants to be healthy, right? Like, by, but we we what we do is we forget it. I don't want to say that. <laughs> but we are so lazy, and we're not doing anything, and then we blame God. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches. In distresses for Christ's sake. For I'm, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Wow. God is good, dear friends. Amen. He is able. 
But when he says no, it means he has some other plans for you and for me. It means he is giving us an opportunity. We may not understand everything. We may not have all the answers in this world. And we don't need to have all the answers in this world. How many of us would say, why me, Lord? What have I ever done to receive your blessing? We never ask the Lord, why did you do this, Lord? Why is that you give all these blessings in my life? When was the last day we said to God this way? But we are quick. Lord, I believed in you. I did something great. Why are you torturing me? He's not. He's not. He's not enjoying your pain. Like Mother Teresa said, when you are suffering, you can see God. No, she's a liar. She told lies. She had sufficient money coming all over the world. She could have taken care of all the people who are suffering in that, in that hospital. She misused it. I know the world will call us saints. But why is those people were not taken care of? Why was the, you look at this thing, they were using the same needles that were used in other patients. When they were having so much of money coming all over the world, going to Rome, People were not really taken care of. They wanted to show, look, we have all these sick people. They kept them sick. They died suffering. They say, when you are dying, God is smiling at you. When you're suffering, God is smiling. No, no, God is not smiling when you're suffering. It grieves the heart of God. He wept when Lazarus died. I'll tell you one thing, dear friends. You and I may not understand everything in this world. But what is needed, we have everything here to understand. If you will take time to find it out from the book. If you will read and study, hear the word of God. You fear God, God's power will be upon you. I'll tell you, you know why, why Paul was able to rejoice in his infirmity? Because of the power of God upon him. The power of God upon him. Nobody wants to be sick. And God can heal if we will come to him in the fear of God. You know what the fear of God will do? God, the fear of God will heal the sick. If we fear God, God will heal us. If we fear God, God will take care of our family. If we fear God, God will provide our needs. My God shall supply all your needs, the Bible says, and not your greeds. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Can we say that? Like, you know, today we'll, I, can all th I can do all things. It's only on the positive thing. How about I can take this cross through Christ which strengtheneth Strengtheneth me. I can go through this cross through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Because when we fear God, God will give us sufficient power from heaven to go through this. And if God gets glory out of it, that's the utmost desire that you and I should have, dear friend. That God should get glory out of our life. Amen. You want God to move in your life? Fear God. You want God to work in your children's life? Fear God. You want God to work in your family? Fear God. You want God to give you blessings in your job? Fear God. You want God to bless your education? Fear God. The secret of God's blessing upon every Christian is to have the fear of God upon your life. The fear of God. Is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is understanding. You know what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, the, verse number 13 the fear of God is to achieve evil. 
the fear of god is to forsake proud look let's let's do and we finish here proverbs chapter 8 this is the last verse that i will read for you come to proverbs chapter 8 verse number 13 what is the fear of god the fear of the lord verse number 18 proverbs chapter 8 the bible says the fear of the lord is to hate evil the first thing is pride it's because of pride we do what we do against god because of pride we live the way we live so the first thing god says is the pride why because satan the first thing that entered into the heart of a anointed cherub was the pride i am better than everybody else the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy you know arrogancy is what <laughs> so what god said so what i'm not going to obey that i'm not still convinced about it i'm not going to do this the let the pastor preach man whatever he wants to i'm not going to do it i'm not going to obey it that's arrogancy the fear of the lord you see people who fear god will not become proud but rather humble the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth wow that is dangerous froward mouth do i hate those are the things fear of god is not something else fear of god is to hate all these things i don't want this in my life i forsake these things because when you hate this wisdom comes when you hate this knowledge comes when you hate this understanding comes when you hate this the power of god takes control over your life shall we pray